With the amount of 3D printers coming out and the amount of 3D printers we've tested on this channel, it's not often that there's a newcomer that releases a machine that really shocks me. Well, one exception to that was Artillery 3D, who really came out of nowhere last year with their Sidewinder, which was a rival to the popular CR test line of machines, but it came with a lot of extra bells and whistles, things like silent drivers, things like direct drive with a volcano style heater block, a touch screen, uh, the glass kind of ultra base style bed on that machine. These were things that were not common on machines in that price point at that time. And I actually named this printer in a video last year, the best sub $500 3D printer of 2019. A combination of that machine and the smaller Genius, which was released shortly after with a lot of the same bells and whistles have been my workhorses over the past year of printing. Fast forward to a couple of months ago and Artillery teased a printer on their Twitter. Now up until recently, there was not a whole lot known about this machine other than that it was bright yellow, but given my past experience with their other two machines, I was really excited to see them coming up with a new 3D printer to add to their existing catalog. Well, since then, we've learned a lot more about this machine, which is the Artillery Hornet. All the specs and features are available over on their website, which I can link you guys in the description below. And they went quite a different way with this machine. Artillery did reach out to me and asked if I wanted to test out this machine. And again, given my experience with the other machines, I said absolutely yes. And I spent the last couple of weeks testing out this machine and running various prints through the Artillery Hornet. So in today's video, we are going to be checking out the Artillery Hornet. We will go over the specs. We will go over what my experience has been like with just setup and getting this machine up and running. We'll do some printing and check out print quality. And of course we will go over the kind of pros and cons of this machine. And I will give you guys my final conclusion of what my at least initial thoughts are of using this machine up until this point. I hope you guys are excited to check out this bright yellow printer. And without further ado, let's get right into today's video. So in a similar fashion to what we normally do, let's get right into the specs for the Artillery Hornet. The build volume on this 3D printer is 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. It is a Bowden style extruder, which is completely different than their other two machines, which are both direct drive. It is using the same kind of Titan style extruder that they have on their direct drive. But again, in this uh, configuration, it is a Bowden setup. One really unique thing about this is the wiring between the extruder and the hot end. It's very unique in that it's all contained inside of one thick cable that even has the Bowden tube integrated inside. Although this does mean that if something does fail or you need to replace the Bowden tube, the cable would need to be swapped. It is a very sleek all-in-one solution. And as long as replacements are readily available, this has to be one of the cleanest integrations I've seen for a Bowden printer so far. The hot end is not all metal, but the portion on the bottom, the heater block looks very much so like an E3D V6. And I haven't checked this out, but it is possible that swapping it over to an all metal heat break and authentic E3D uh, nozzle and heater block, if you want to do so, might be a fairly easy conversion. The frame of this machine consists of aluminum extrusions as well as quite a bit of injection molded plastic. It is a 24 volt system and it is running a 32 bit board with silent stepper motors which is the silent stepper motors is quite common but the 32 bit board is something new to this machine for them as far as the bed goes it does have the black kind of ultra base style glass bed which personally i am a huge fan of for how well it sticks to parts and just how kind of diverse it is if you do want to print with some more kind of exotic out there filaments there is one lead screw for the z-axis with an anti-backlash nut and there is also a belt tensioner that is built into the x-axis they did go away with the touchscreen that they had on their previous models and swap this out for your kind of more traditional rotary style menu. As for connectivity, you have the options to print over USB or using the SD card slot, which is located on the front of the machine. Firmware wise, this is running Marlin 2.0. They did go away with the filament runout sensor, which is also on their other two machines. And I did start a couple of prints and just kill the power and turn it back on to see if there was power loss recovery, which I do believe is on their other machines. And that was not present on this machine. Just like on the other two printers in the catalog, it is manual bed leveling featuring four kind of big bed leveling knobs, which is pretty easy to adjust. That really sums up the specs and the features of the machine. But for those of you that do like seeing this, I did want to take a moment and pop the bottom of the machine. So that way you can take a look at the wiring and the electronics that are inside. Below we can find the 32 bit artillery main board, which is new to their machines, which has been fitted with some dynamic drivers. Other than that, there's not really anything crazy going on under the hood. I did notice that similar to their other machines, they did use what appears to be hot glue to kind of hold the plugs in place. I understand the wanting to make sure that through transit, nothing pops out, but 
I can't say I'm the biggest fan of this because it does get quite messy from the strings from this hot glue. And also if you do need to replace or upgrade something, it's kind of a pain to have to melt or remove the hot glue without trying to damage the cables or the plugs that are connected to the main board. With that being said, the machine did arrive very nicely. It was packaged well, and this setup was a piece of cake. You're primarily just attaching the top carriage to the bottom carriage, uh, securing the hot end to the X carriage, and then plugging in all of the cables, and you're pretty much ready to rock and roll. I would say that from unboxing to ready to print, it should be no more than 30 minutes. Once the printer was assembled, I did go ahead and really quickly grab a piece of printer paper and level the four bed leveling screws, and then I fired up the Hornet and was ready to do some printing. Once I powered on the machine, I did go ahead and load in some red PLA that I had laying around. I plugged in the included SD card into the front slot and checked to see if there were any pre-sliced files. There was one file on the SD card, but it wasn't super exciting. It was just a tiny little red cube that had Artillery's logo on the top of it, but it did turn out nicely and at least let me know that everything was functioning correctly on this machine. Once that was complete, I hopped over to Cura to slice up my own file to print. There's actually three profiles on the memory card for Cura, which were fine, fast, and normal. And following the included booklet, I quickly had the profiles imported and ready to go. All the printing that I did while testing out this machine was with their normal profile. This was the closest to the settings that I use on my other printers. One thing that I was really surprised with by this is that the normal profile actually has a printing speed of 80 millimeters a second. This is much quicker than the normal 50 to 60 millimeters a second I typically opt for. But being that this machine has a lighter carriage due to it being a Bowden, I figured that I'd at least give it a go. With the exception of two parts from last week's video, all of the prints in the ironing video I did last week were all printed on the Artillery Hornet using those stock normal settings at 80 millimeters a second. The only thing, of course, that I did change was I did turn on ironing for the sake of testing that out in that video and all the parts turned out really nicely. At that point, I didn't actually use any glue stick on the glass uh, ultra base style bed. I just printed stock on there with the recommended settings and they turned out very nicely. I will say that again, being someone that doesn't necessarily push their printers to the limits as far as speed goes, seeing the gantry whip around 80 millimeters a second was much quicker than the normal 50 or 60 that I'm used to. But again, everything turned out great. So I was very happy up to this point. Once that was complete, I wanted to print something functional, so I hopped over to Thingiverse, was looking around at things I could use, and I have quite a bit of aerosol cans for dust off for cleaning all of my different electronics. I've got some paints laying around, and uh, one thing that I have owned in the past is kind of one of these triggers. This is actually the finished part, and what this does is it snaps onto the can. Instead of having to press down with one finger on the can, you can just use your whole hand to kind of press this trigger, and it'll actually press down and spray the paint or spray the your compressed air or whatever that you've got. And so I saw this, I loaded up Matter Hacker's Build Series Orange PLA, and I hit print. Again, this is with the stock settings, and uh, it printed like this, and the part turned out great. I tested it afterwards just on this random can of dust off that I had over here, and it is a tight fit. It actually just slides on like that. And I don't, the top on this is, doesn't actually have the correct top that you would need, but you can see that it is a very, like the can is holding and it is a very tight fit. So I was really happy with this print. And um, this is definitely a practical, a practical print. Next, I decided to do something a bit bigger and a bit more kind of crazy intricate. I found this gorgeous model over on my mini factory that's kind of like a vase or just a centerpiece that has some kind of crazy mesh geometries to it. And I've got a spool of protopastas, I believe it's the galactic purple, that I went ahead and sliced up this file and printed with. It was roughly a 14 hour print, so a fairly large print, again, at the 80 millimeters a second print time. And I started off the print, I watched the print throughout most of the day while I was working, and it was at probably 80% before I went away. I think I went to bed actually. and. I was expecting to wake up to a completed print and I was super disappointed to wake up to a thin coil of filament on the print bed and this part sitting off to the side looking really bad up top. And so it was really clear what happened. The part just lost adhesion, whether that was due to um, printing too quickly and having the nozzle hit the part or whether that was due to um, not having the bed hot enough or whatever the reasoning was, it was clearly due to bed adhesion. I didn't want to give up on this, so I did just go ahead and make some adjustments. I raised the bed temperature by 10C from 60C to 70C. I did apply a light coat of glue stick and I dropped down the print speeds from 80 millimeters a second to 60, which is again, much closer to the ballpark of what I'm usually printing with. 
and I hit print again, and this time the part turned out great, and actually, when I went to go remove it, it was really, really stuck. So just adding that additional light coat of glue stick, which is something I normally do, I just figured with this being a new glass plate, and I know some people don't really print with a lot of adhesives with PLA, I'd give it a go, but I'm definitely gonna stick with my light coat of glue stick moving forward. So next I loaded up the orange build series PLA again and I went over to my mini factory and happened to stumble across the mythic mugs which are these awesome um, drinking mugs that you basically can fit a can inside of and I believe it was initially part of a Kickstarter. One of my colleagues Chris was printing a ton of them at the office at one point and uh, I saw this model of the lion mug and thought that this would be a really, really cool print to kind of check out some of the detail and see how this printer handles those things. And so I printed that out next. That print was a pretty long one. I would say somewhere in the ballpark of 10 to 12-ish hours, but the, the model turned out absolutely amazing. The, the printer did a fantastic job. The 3D artist that designed this, who I will link you in the description down below too, because you should definitely check out their other work or check out this mug, because it, it's absolutely insane, but just did such a fantastic job. And this is something that I, I do need to print a little riser for, because this one is actually um, a little bit too deep. It's like meant for a tall can. Um, so I do need to print a little riser that they have, so that way I can use it for just like a soda can or something like that. But I mean, it is just a really awesome, glorious, glorious model that, that the Hornet did a really, really good job of. I was super pleased uh, with how this turned out. Next, I found a model of this kind of unique looking uh, bolt and nut, and I went ahead and printed this out just to see how, uh, how good of a job this machine would do and if the tolerances would be correct based off of the model uh, and how it was designed, and I was really pleased. One, this turned out awesome. This is in Matter Hacker's uh, natural build series PLA, which I've had uh, sealed for a really long time and was finally just deciding I'm gonna crack this open. So uh, it is a really tight fit. Once you get it on, it just, it slides nicely. It's really satisfying, but um, it is cool to see again though that the tolerances, um, both in the 3D artist's design of this, but also the printer was able to do a really good job of all of these tiny little details um, so that the parts do thread onto each other and off of each other really nicely. So the last thing I wanted to check out was just some PETG. I had no doubt that this machine would be able to print with this material fine, but I did have a little bit of white ceramic PETG left over, and I decided to print out Chuck from Filament Friday's uh, little pond model. I imported it into Cura, and I did scale it up, 200% just because the initial one is really small and it's great for testing out things on the printer, but I wanted to do one a little bit bigger just so that way I can use up a little bit more of the filament and have a little bit more uh, of a part to show you guys. And so just like I suspected, there were no problems. I used pretty much the stock settings I had in there. The only things I changed was the layer cooling fan I dropped to 50%. I increased the bed temperature to 80% because for whatever reasoning at 70, which is my normal go-to, I was having a little bit of issue with bed adhesion. And then I raised the hot end temperature to 245 Celsius. But other than that, everything else was stock. After working with the Artillery Hornet for the last couple of weeks, I've definitely developed my opinion on it. And I really wanna look at it two ways. The first way I want to look at it is as a standalone machine, just as a 3D printer out there on the market. And for the price point, given that it is a really quick to assemble printer, the price I think right now is around $260 roughly, at least listed on Artillery's website. The fact that it's got a 32-bit board, the whole integrated Bowden type setup with the uh, Titan style extruder, the black diamond glass bed, and just the print quality I was able to get off of it. It is a really nice printer and it is a solid contender to similar machines that are kind of out there in the market. The other angle I wanna look at it is from the standpoint of Artillery's lineup of machines. So Artillery has the Sidewinder for right now around 399, the Genius for around 299, and again, this machine price pointed at around $259. So as of right now with the current listings, the Genius is only $40 more than the Artillery Hornet. And with the Genius, you get a direct drive setup, which granted, not everybody necessarily wants direct drive, but I do think that if we were to do a poll that probably more people would lean towards direct drive. We can revisit the pros and cons in another video. That's a whole debacle. But it does come with direct drive. It does come with a volcano style heater block, which is pretty unique and something that I really liked. Um, it does have an LED on the hot end. It comes with a touch screen. Uh, you have got a filament runout sensor, you've got power loss recovery, you've got dual lead screws. There's just, there's a lot of additional features that you get with the Genius for only a $40 more price point. 
So with that being said, although I do think that the Hornet is a solid machine, when you compare those two to each other for a $40 difference, unless you're on an extreme budget, I would definitely opt for the Artillery Genius just because of all of those additional bells and whistles that you do get. Now, with this machine being such a new machine to market, it is very possible that this is just the initial price and that it will lower or it will correct. But if they're somehow able to get this machine lower in price, and I think I saw it over on uh, Banggood for that 260 with a $20 coupon, so we're already seeing it potentially down at 240, but if they can get it even lower than that, closer to like the Ender 3 price point of around $200-ish, then I think that it just fits better both in Artillery's catalog and also makes it much more of a contender to a machine, a very entry-level machine like the Ender 3, which is kind of what I feel like they were aiming towards with this printer. The other option that I could think of potentially if they do want to keep it at this $260 price point is to give back some of the features that they took away, like adding the second uh, lead screw for the Z-axis was really nice. The uh, power loss recovery, I would assume they could probably implement with just a firmware upgrade. The filament runout sensor, some of those things, if they wanted to keep at the price point, I just think that they need to give back some of the features that were taken away with this printer. But for anybody that does own an artillery machine, let me know what your thoughts are on this as a uh, as a machine in their catalog. Now, again, I do understand a lot of people do prefer the uh, direct drive, but there are certainly benefits of the Bowden style setup, especially for someone that is trying to push their printer uh, when it comes to speed. Having that, not having the stepper motor or the extruder mounted on the X carriage does give you a lot lighter of a gantry for whipping back and forth when trying to print out parts quickly. But anyways, anyone that does have an artillery machine, let me know what your thoughts are. And if you are looking at the uh, Hornet printer as a potential printer, let me know what your thoughts are based off the specs. And if there's anything I didn't cover, I always try to make these as thorough as possible, but there are so many different angles to look at things. Let me know in the comments down below. And if I don't have the answer to the question, I have no problem reaching out to Artillery directly and figuring out the answer to your question. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I hope you guys all had a great new year. I can't believe it's 2021. 2020 felt like the longest year ever and also felt like when I blinked it was over. I mean, I know that that seems to be the the common theme for many years, but especially with this year, it felt like it took forever and so many things happened in the world and then all of a sudden it's 2021's here. So this was the first video of 2021. Uh, again, I did say thank you in the last video, but I want to reiterate how awesome all of you are for coming back and supporting the channel with liking and subscribing and sharing and your awesome comments. I have gotten so many just comments that I have to read them out loud to Aaron because I'm so like just pumped up like by being able to help people or inspire people, people. <laughs> Or, or just some of the nice things that I've been hearing from you guys. So I really appreciate all the support. Um, if you do want to support the channel, furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description to my Patreon. We have got some uh, additional recent supporters, so thank you very much. There are some really cool rewards over there. Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos. There is a video coming out next Saturday, and I hope to see you there. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I'm out. Peace, guys.